very good morning viewers. Uh, we are here at the beautiful Mazepa Bay Island. We just had some lovely teas at our cottage. And um, yeah, we decided to come uh, to the island today. We actually have another plan for later today. Um, but we decided to come and, and try and get that, that early morning cop or uh, that, that garrick that's, that's here on, on daybreak. Um, yeah, so that's the plan. We're gonna probably do the island for about an hour. And then we've got another plan where we're gonna go and do some scratching so we can we can get some edibles and all of that. But uh, even bigger than that, um, we have a we have a guy who's uh, turned 27. I think he is today. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. We, uh, it's my uh, my dad's birthday today, so a very happy birthday to you. Thank you. We we hope you have a, a great day and catch many many fish, um, and and have many many more birthdays uh, to come. Yeah. So that's that's us for now. Um, catch us a little bit later on when we hopefully have a fish. probably about to pack up and, and, and leave and then uh, our guide John was uh, throwing a paddle tail out the side at uh, just a tiny and got absolutely floorboarded by what we actually think is a garrick. We saw it did a little bit of acrobatics for us and here's a little bit of a show. Um, yeah so we're gonna try and, and get this one out and uh, yeah we're gonna obviously be careful because we're gonna maneuver around slippery rock. So uh, obviously safety first. Uh, so yeah. So let us try and get this one, and uh, yeah, then we can we can have a we can have a chat about it. Okay, viewers. This is exactly what some of the some of the guys come to Mazepa for, right? Brilliant work by John Warren well on a beautiful, beautiful garrick, right? He got that on a, on a paddle tail and a and a two ounce jigger, and then on his on his on his spinning setup, right? Very well fought. You know, it's it's definitely someone who knows the rocks and knows his way around uh, around the island here. Um, it just shows the the local knowledge and and. Uh, uh, the expertise of the of the locals, they really know what they're doing. So, John, really well done, right? I think you you are, I think you want to take this one home, do you? Ah, of course, of yeah. course, of course, right. of course. Yeah. So, yeah, very uh, very good fish. Um, we obviously want to we want to we want to preserve their stocks, um, but also uh, it's it's a really great fish, and I think I think you're gonna really enjoy this one, eh? eh? Thank you. Very well done. Hold it, John. You are. Okay, viewers. Um, yeah, we we moved on. We had a we had a pretty successful morning, I would say, for an hour on the island. We got one lovely Gary. Um, yeah, we moved on and we came uh, on our scratching day. Uh, we decided to come to a place called Gunga Channel um, to to scratch for bronze beam and, and brush and things like that. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, let's see if we can get a few of those uh, bronze beam and, and make a show. Of it. I decided with with, uh, with such a place like this here, yeah, I mean you can really target anything from here. Um, but we, we came today mainly targeting edibles, um, being bronze beam, brusher, uh, hopefully maybe a pig nose grunter, um, yeah things like that. I'm gonna start off fishing for, for bronze beam. Um, yeah, well setup using is my Soltiga 6500. Um, and my saltest medium heavy, the 15 foot. Um, yeah, a little bit heavy for for bronze beam and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I think I think with the with the structure in the water and stuff like that, it gives me a chance to to bully a fish and not uh, not get cut off and, and leave extra braids in in the water and stuff like that. Um, yeah, just maybe a word of advice when you are preparing for trips like this. I use a pool noodle, and while I'm watching TV and stuff like that. 
I sit there and make my bronze beam traces, um, and yeah, and I just chuck them onto a onto a pool noodle like that. So when you do uh, get to the beach, you're not scrambling and, and, and tying hooks and tying swivels and, and wasting time. Uh, be a little bit proactive, and you get these done early, and it saves you a good ten minutes of fishing time. Um, so yeah, a very basic bronze beam trace, the combi swivel. Um, yeah, the length being close to about 30 centimeters, um, and then I just tied a figure of eight on there just to stop my magic orange bead there um, from going up too high. Um, you obviously want to when you when you are targeting the, those bronze beam, you want to target the water that's that's washing and stuff like that, and and, and where there's a lot of white water. Um, they, they do come and, and feed on the rocks and uh, on, on stuff that's coming off the rocks and all of that. Um, we, we did get word from the locals that uh, they, they were feeding in, in the dropping tide instead of the pushing tide. So that's that's why we we, um, we targeted that tide today. Um, so yeah, stay tuned. Let's see if we can uh, we can get our target our first target species. And then after that, um, we're gonna get uh, John to maybe show us one of his local traces, and then um, yeah, hopefully try for a brush or a, or a pig nose after that. A little bit of bait presentation of um, when I do pick a brush pig. Um, yeah, I generally like to open my my prod quite a bit. Um, yeah, so you just butterfly your prawn. Make sure you do use light cotton, uh, or the thin cotton, because it does make a difference in terms of if they are being a little bit finicky with the with how they bite. Yeah, that on its own, and you got your little magic bead there. Um, but that on its own is more than enough to catch your prawn trip. Um, we do have a little bit of cracker, it's got a little bit old. Um, but speaking of John, um, he actually said sometimes the cracker that's a little bit old, um, obviously with, with fresh cracker you work with movement as well. Um, but he said other times the, the cracker that's a little bit older, um, is obviously a little bit more smelly and it actually gets you a bite faster um, so again local knowledge local expertise does help a lot right um, I, I can see John is putting his rod up again um, he made us watch a little bit of TV on the island in the morning with his Garrick uh, I can see he's slowly making his chase I think he gave us a head start um, and he's yeah Let's see if uh, are we having another competition again today, John? No, no, of course. Of course. Oh, okay. Uh, He's getting one a fish. Oh, one something. I'm not gonna mention it. There's something. Oh, on there. I see. I yeah. see. Yeah. So we got that that little competition running. Um, yeah, and the, the the guy who catches the most fish wins. Yeah, one fish. Uh, between John and I, and the loser has to buy an ice cold cold to get back to the team. We'll uh, let's get into the water yeah. and we'll. See you after that. Well, this is my first catch for this weekend. Well, I hope it's a good start. Nice bite. Okay viewers, you can see the, the there are some fish starting to bite now. Um I'm a salvin got this beautiful, beautiful little fish here. Ow. And it's open. Um but yeah, um, not the exact target species, but it is a bite nonetheless. And we're gonna release this little guy um, and allow it to thrive in, in the such great ecosystem that they have here. Alright, so, well, so, well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Hey viewers, we have another beautiful fish. Let's see if this one doesn't poke me. Yeah, that was a serious, serious fight. It actually all well, got washed up onto this the rocks here at the front. So, um, yeah, it was a bit of a nerve-wracking one going and watching that, that massive swell come to work. Um, but yeah, good fish. Uh, unfortunately, this fish gobbled down that, that one out, you know. You can actually see the blood is starting to come out of his gills. So what we're going to do is we're going to just clip the hook here and we're going to just put him into a pool uh, just to see if he does revive. Um, but yeah, it's, the blood seems to be coming out quite quickly. This is the target species. Right? We got one uh, a little bit earlier. The um, reason why we're keeping them in the pool is um, if we do release them, yeah, whichever ones are there with it uh, in the show, they actually spook away. So that's the reason for us keeping them uh, in the pool. Um, we obviously are going to release them when we do leave. Um, so yeah, that's that's the reasoning behind keeping keeping the runner in the pool. Uh, but yeah, it just shows how, how rife this ecosystem is. I mean, these, these, these ones are in beautiful condition. Um, and I mean, if you look at the colors and, and, and just the, the whole shapes and everything of this fish, it's just a beautiful fish. And, and the only way that these fish can really thrive is if, is if we actually help the ecosystem and, and release as many as we can. So yeah, um, I'm gonna go, I got, uh, my uncle holding my rod while uh, while I, I brought this fish to the pond. So yeah, we're gonna leave this guy here and then we'll uh, we'll release him on our way out. All right, guys, um, we finally uh, got our our live tracker. Um, we we're actually just waiting for the guy to get back to the river. Um, but yeah, this is ideally what my my best bronze rib bait would look like. Um, obviously rushing, but not to get the bait into the water. Generally about three or four crackers, depending uh, what you actually put for. Uh, what was actually fell away from me. But yeah, one is trying to go back into the ocean. I'm gonna catch you. Definitely gonna catch you. Yeah, come in. Yeah. Uh, the good thing about the, the live cracker is that it creates a lot, a lot of movement in the water, uh, just above that hook. And the bronze are biting a little bit shy today. Very, very weirdly actually. Um, like we're getting some that are that are just nibbling us, and they uh, they're also getting uh, some that are just floorboarding us. So yeah, that's what it looks like. And yeah, let's go ahead and get in the water. Okay, viewers, we had a, an imposter in our, one of our pools who is trying to steal one of the bronze broom that we actually. Uh, that we're actually trying to save, so... Yeah! Uh, he actually doesn't want to let go. But yeah, we're gonna get this guy away so we can keep this, this blondie alive. Alright viewers, uh, yeah, we had to definitely move those, uh, those blondies out from that pool because uh, we actually... The Oki came in, tried to grab one of them and 
and tried to move away with it. Uh, we saved him the first time and then he came back after that. So uh, what we did was we returned the Oki to the, the, the pool that he came out from and we, uh, we actually moved the, the Brondides to a much deeper pool uh, which will give them an advantage that if that does happen while we are fishing um, they'll, they'll have enough uh, uh, room to actually get away from it. targeting a uh, bronze brim, you know. Okay, with the large, now I'm gonna put it back. Alright, I'm putting it back now. Okay. The bit actually is still far. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice black tail, huh? Nice big black tail. Big. Uh, another beautiful bronzy caught by my old man. I'm definitely watching TV today. I couldn't even get a bronzy bite. Um, but you know, you never, you can never buy experience. Eh? So the whole timers know what he's doing, and it is his birthday today. So yeah, very really good fish. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna pop this one into the pool and then carry on fishing out there. to the end of our uh, our great scratching session at Munga uh, Channel. Um, it was really, really a, a lovely day. Um, we started off the, the day with a, with a lovely jerry and then ended off with, uh, with a few front frame and, and a few, actually got quite a few different species. Uh, so that's a huge positive and just shows uh, when you come to pristine areas like this uh, how, how live and, and how live the, the ecosystem is. Um, so yeah, we are we are, we gonna relocate just now. Um, I think we got about an hour to drive back to where we're staying. And um, yeah, we're gonna go and target a big shark this evening. Uh, so that's gonna be an interesting one. And I'm excited to, to get hooked up. I have a few goals for myself for this um, for this trip. Uh, so hopefully uh, some of those will, will, will get into action.